We're finally able to get our hands on some of the products that Philips announced last fall in October with their huge event in Paris. This is the Evnia lineup. In that release, they said they were going to do keyboards, gaming headsets, mice, and monitors. Gaming monitors were one of the big focuses as well. So this is the first Evnia product that we've been able to review. This is the 34 M2C 7600 MV. So like most monitors, a massive name. What that comes down to, it's a 34 inch, 21 by nine aspect ratio, 1500R curved mini LED panel. So the resolution is 3440 by 1440 at 165 Hertz refresh rate with a ridiculous peak brightness of 1400 nits. But there are some downsides when it comes to an actual gaming monitor. So let's dive in and check it out. And like we said, this is the first Evnia product that we've been able to review. Hopefully we'll get some other ones in the future. There's a model that is very similar to this, but it is a QD OLED that I would love to compare directly to this to see which one would be the better choice. So make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss that video as well as our other tech and gaming related content. So in case you missed it, I'll put a link up here in the corner if you wanna check it out. But Philips actually invited us out to an event in Paris, France to showcase their new announcement and launch of the Evnia line with a focus on design, inclusion, and quality products, it's set to be a comprehensive lineup of peripherals that will fit just as well in the design studio as a gaming battle station. So first off, let's take a look at this monitor and we'll run through the spec sheet so you can see everything that we're working with here. Like we said, this is the 34 inch 21 by nine aspect ratio, 1500R curved mini LED panel. It's using HDMI 2.1, DisplayPort 1.4, or USB-C. It has WQHD resolution, which is 34 40 by 1440 at 165 Hertz it does have adaptive sync 1400 nits peak brightness in HDR mode HDR 10 integrated 5 watt speakers with a KVM switch for multiple devices and ambiglow RGB lighting and lastly a 2.5 millisecond response time which we will talk about in depth here in a little bit so by far one of the main features of these products the Evnia lineup is their kind of signature premium stylish design and I think they really nailed it with this monitor. There is a polygonal design on the back that houses the LED lights for Philips Ambiglow RGB lighting and flows nicely with the 1500R curve of the display. The stand has just the right amount of resistance to keep it, keep it secure, but it's also very easy to adjust. As you can see, it pivots here left and right very easily, also raises up and down very nicely and you can you know, raise it with one hand. It's very easy to adjust, uh, but still feels secure. It doesn't feel too loose. So Philips really nailed the feel of that to give it a more premium feel. There is a single menu button on the back to control the menu. Unfortunately, it's placed in a position that makes it uh, a little bit harder, like, you kind of have to put your hand a little bit further back there than I would like. It's kind of nitpicky, but I'm used to those buttons being a little bit closer to the edge, a little bit easier to find. This one's a little bit further back, and the only thing that kind of stinks about it is that it takes a second. I'm gonna push it right now. It takes a second for the menu to actually pop up. You can see how long that took. But once you're in here, navigating all the menus is very easy. It's pretty responsive. It's, it's easy to tell you know how to get to those different modes. And pushing in different directions will bring up quick menus. If you push up, quickly brings up your input selection. If you push to the left, quickly brings up your smart image selection. And then if you push down or to the right, it will bring up these more in-depth windows that take just a little bit longer to pop up. And we'll touch briefly on the ambiglow lighting on the back, you know, take it or leave it. This is something that I really enjoyed on some older Philips TVs. On the gaming side of things, um, I don't know that I appreciate it as much as I did on the movie watching on those older ones. Even on the Philips Momentum 55 that we have, you can't really see it, but it's sitting over there, kind of at that, have that set up for consoles. The lighting isn't as responsive as what it would need to be to be very immersive for a gaming experience, in my opinion. It's, it's a little bit delayed and it's a little bit kind of jittery. It's not like a quick, smooth motion. But in other scenarios, you know, it's a great way to light up your room if you are working, if you, you know, just wanna kind of shine a light over your room. 
Um, I really enjoyed that aspect of it, but as far as like the response for the gaming experience, it's just a little bit too delayed in my opinion. Okay, and now moving on to just the overall image quality of this thing, you know, there are, there's a mini LED display, which um, has its pros and its cons. And one thing to keep in mind here is that Evnia is kind of, you know, tiering different monitors in different series. So there's gonna be like a 5,000 series, uh, this is the 7000 series, and then there's also an 8000 series. So this is the 7600 MV. This has the mini LED panel in here. There's also an 8000 series that has most of the same specs, you know, same size, same resolution, same design, except it has a QD OLED panel and a 175 hertz refresh rate over the 165 here. And that is the same price. That's $1,300 for both of these monitors. So it's interesting, that one's a little bit faster and much lower response time, 0.1 second greater gray response time. And it's also, you know, in that higher tier, but it's priced the same, which I found interesting. I do think that Philips and Evnia have gotten some flack for some of their pricing. Like this monitor was, I think, closer to $2,000 when it was first announced. And since then, obviously that price has come down uh, substantially to where it should be, or maybe even a little bit more affordable. We'll talk about that in a second um, at that $1,300 price point. Okay, so moving on to picture quality, you know, really the main headlining feature here that I wanna talk about is that peak brightness. You know, looking at other monitors available on B&H that have similar specs, you know, same resolution, good refresh rates, there's not much else that can reach that peak brightness of 1400 nits. And in a, you know, controlled lighting indoor space, um, that's way in excess of what you would really need uh, to, to work with, you know, accurate color. But that does open up the door for some interesting uh, use cases. You know, if you are in a very bright room, you have windows open everywhere or, you know, a large window to the side of your office, um, this is gonna be able to keep up with that. Just for the heck of it, I even took this out into my backyard to see how it would look, you know, playing Forza Horizon 5 in some dappled sunlight on a sunny Indiana afternoon. And I can see everything just fine, you know, even in the benchmark mode, which kind of races through a dawn experience, kind of starts at night and then gets into dawn. You can still see all the corners just fine. Like I could easily drive in that situation uh, without feeling like I had to really strain my eyes to try to see what corners were coming up. So it is a very bright monitor. You know, some of these different modes on here, we have it in the display HDR 1400 uh, smart image mode right now. I'm gonna pop it up into the HDR game, which really showcases how bright and vivid this display can get. So you can kind of see it there like, yeah, it's, yeah, it just gets ridiculously bright in some situations. So obviously not what you're gonna wanna use all the time, but there might be some situations where you do want that. And that is one, you know, benefit over the QD OLED. That one tops out, I think, 1000 nits peak brightness, which is still probably plenty for most people in most situations. But if you need a super bright display, this might wanna be your pick. And that brightness matched with, you know, local dimming from this mini LED panel actually makes for a really good looking HDR image. If you are just watching content or playing some HDR games, some titles really take good advantage of that. We'll talk about Forza Horizon 5 here in a second. Um, this does a very good job of making HDR content, you know, really pop and look really good, especially in a brighter space where you can't control, you know, sunshine or brighter lights as much. Okay, and so now let's move on to some other things that maybe aren't so great. We mentioned in the spec list that uh, 2.5 millisecond greater gray response time, which, you know, on paper doesn't seem like very much. And um, I didn't think it would make that big of a difference, but that's pretty noticeable on this display. So from what I can tell, you know, usually that's a good, that's a big indicator of smearing and ghosting, which is where there's just kind of like a trail that's left over as something is moving across your display. So I didn't necessarily notice this a whole lot playing Battlefield 2042 and Forza Horizon 5. You know, there wasn't necessarily anything that really caught my eye, but where I did notice it was just moving things around on my desktop, like my Steam library. <laughs> when I was moving that around, there's just like a little trail of, you know, this, uh, black smear that was kind of following around some different aspects on there, which is very unfortunate that, um, that that's happening. So while I haven't actually tried the QD OLED version of this monitor, that has a 0.1 second response time, which 
should, in theory, help take care of a lot of that. And this monitor does have some different smart response modes that you can adjust. There's off, fast, faster, and fastest. I didn't see it make that big of a difference with smearing, like through all those things, there's still smearing. It did help with ghosting on some other images, you know, doing the UFO test and seeing how clear that image looked. When smart response is turned off, there is, you know, quite a bit of ghosting. It's, there's just, it kind of looks like motion blur across the monitor. But if you do crank this all the way up to fastest, that does help take care of a lot of that. But on kind of the darker images, you can still see some smearing on there. Um, so, you know, for this price point, um, if you are a super competitive gamer, it's hard to recommend this display based on that. One other thing to consider, you know, this is a 21 by nine, so it's a little bit wider than the standard 16.9 monitors that we're usually used to, you know, the 1440p monitors. And, you know, if you are upgrading from something that's 1440p going to this, it's a little bit more resolution. So you will see a little bit of an FPS loss. That might not be that big of an issue to everybody, um, but is something to consider if you are thinking about upgrading to a wider monitor. For me, it equated to about a 17 FPS drop when I was playing Forza Horizon 5, which, you know, it was still well in excess of over 100 FPS with, you know, pretty much everything maxed out on the 4070 Ti that I have in this uh, NZXT Player 3 build. But that's something to keep in mind if you have a graphics card that's already, you know, a little bit strained at what kind of resolutions you're pushing. And on Battlefield 2042 is about a 20 FPS drop. You know, usually I was getting around 130, 135. You can watch our comparison video up here between a few different builds with the 4070 Ti if you want to see more uh, actual specs in there and what kind of, you know, frame rates I was getting. Um, but this was dropping it down to a little bit over 100 FPS. Now, that being said, Playing an HDR on a wide monitor like this makes Forza Horizon 5 look incredible. Forza Horizon 5, I do feel like really takes advantage of what HDR displays can do. And that kind of game, you know, it's not a hyper competitive game where the slightest little bit of response time or refresh rates is gonna make a huge difference in, you know, how quickly you can pick up an enemy's location or see different triggers that are going on. So if you are playing that kind of game, having something that's a little bit brighter uh, might be more enjoyable for that experience. So talking about some of the competition, you know, with this monitor, even though I haven't actually tried it, you know, this monitor, one of its direct competitors is the QD OLED. Uh, because it has that lower response time, it also has a higher refresh rate and it's the exact same price. Um, so that's gonna be, if you are a competitive player, that's going to be, it's going to be hard to recommend this monitor over that one. And from other brands, you know, there certainly are monitors that match, we kind of talked about this, that match all the specs of this monitor, except for the brightness. Like if you need a bright monitor, if you work in a very bright environment, game in a very bright environment, this is something that you might want to look at. So who is this monitor for? You know, I think it would be best fit for somebody who is a casual gamer, but also works in a brightly lit, well-designed, you know, studio space that they really pay attention to what kind of design pieces they're putting in that space. And they want something that looks good, that, you know, gets bright to keep up with, you know, their bright workspace, but can also perform decently well for, you know, a little bit more casual gaming. Like we said, if you are a very competitive player, you're probably already, you know, looking at a higher refresh rate than this. And the response time, you know, even when playing some titles, I think would be um, something that would make people want to steer clear of this one. All right, well, I hope this video was helpful in talking about this monitor. Once again, this is the 34 m 2 c 7600 MV, and I'm hoping to take a look at the QD OLED version of this as well, compare them, you know, right against each other and see how those perform, because there are, I do think there are a lot of nice things about this monitor, like Philips and Evnia has just nailed the design, the peak brightness is great, but for more competitive gaming, uh, I do think that there are some issues that people might run into. All right, well, thanks for watching. That's gonna do it for this video. If you're looking for some other videos to watch, I will link to our video from the launch of the Evnia line, as well as our most recent video. And thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up so others can find it easier and consider subscribing. This is Jordan with 9to5toys.